sorry, three core values, sorry, yeah. Because you felt for children that uh, three is enough. Too much is too many. This would encapsulate the whole gospel in three working principles. Okay. Service, which incorporates concern for the poor and quality education. And communion. Communion, community. Now, I shall briefly, in five minutes, <laughs> explain all three. No, uh, in five minutes. Faith. This is how we teach it. Now, remember, in many of other South schools, in the Philippines, you only had it maybe down south. Then you have a, a greater number of Muslim pupils, maybe. Of course, catechists do not teach Muslim pupils. They don't have a catechism. But you know, in our, the South schools, in Egypt, in Egypt, more than 90% are all Muslim. In Thailand, almost all our students are Buddhist. Right? So we know we have different LaSalle schools in, uh, in 80 over countries, and sometimes the Christian, uh, Christians are a minority. Christians are a minority. But we have to teach everybody, because they all belong to the school. So how do I teach faith? I will now give you a different way of looking at faith. But remember, you are Catholic, teachers of the faith, so you must now think of it in the Catholic sense, right? Huh? But I'll teach you in a general sense. Faith is, number one, faith in myself. I must believe in myself. As a, a coordinator of our catechists, you know, catechists should believe in themselves as well, right? If you don't believe in yourself, you have no right to go and teach young children. So you must believe in yourself. I am a child of God. I'm very gifted in many ways. I don't have all the gifts, but I have many gifts, right? I have sinned. I have sinned. I have weaknesses. I have character defects. But that is not all of me. That's only one part of me. I am more than my sin. I am more than my character defects. I am more than my mistakes or failures. I am more than that. I will not allow this part of my life to define the whole of me. As a child of God, I am more, always more than that. So you also pass it on to your children, you see. Every child, no matter what his or her defects are, their defects are only part of them. Not all of them. Not all of them. And you have to pass it to the child. Some children feel that they are really good for nothing, you know what I mean? Right? Uh, they are not worthy of God's love, you know, these sort of things, right? And you must never reinforce that. Because God loves all of them. And God loves a sinner, right? As much as the saint, maybe more than the saint, God loves a sinner. Because the sinner is in a desperate situation. So what happens? Faith is number one, faith in myself. Children, all of them can learn. Even the naughtiest child, right? God is close to that child. And God wishes the child to be saved. So what can we do about it? How can we introduce that God, that that child, that very, very naughty child, to a loving God? How do we do that? That's our challenge as a Catholic. So, faith in myself, then faith in others. You know, some children grew up so badly from such unhappy homes, they don't even trust their parents. So, they don't believe in their parents. How do you believe in, in others, right? Huh? So, you have to win the trust of the child. All of us who uh, belong to the faith must win the trust of other people. Yes. Will your friend ever betray you? Of course your friend will betray you. They're only human. Humans do that all the time. But can you still trust them? Yes, you can trust them. If they're your friend, you can trust them. Will your friend ever lie to you? Well, sometimes your friend might lie to you. They're human. And sometimes you lie to your friend. It's human. But we must not give up trust in each other. Trust does not mean the other person is perfect. Trust means you are willing to accept the other person's imperfection and still accept the person. So faith in myself Faith in others, ultimately faith in God. If you don't, you can't even believe, you know what was this phrase? If you can't even believe and trust someone you know, how can you trust someone you cannot see even? How can you say, I love God, but I don't love my neighbor? Not possible. You could say, not possible. If you can't love your neighbor, you can't love God. You're only faking it. You're faking it. Right? Huh? I love God, but people, I cannot stand people. No, okay, not, not, not possible. Right? So what happens is, how do I explain this, this faith in God to a non-Christian who does not believe in God? I'm talking atheists, I remember in the Philippines, we have a growing number of agnostic and atheist people. This is fashionable not to believe in God. It's fashionable to make fun of religion. It's fashionable to put down the wishes and to put down the Pope. So it's fashionable, right? Secular world. How do you do it? Faith in myself, faith in others, ultimately faith in something or someone higher greater and bigger than myself. 
It can be God. It can be some religious teaching like Buddhism. It can be value system. Honesty, integrity, right? Protection of the environment, right? I can believe that I can save the planet by doing what I do to recycle. These are, you know, that's nothing. Oh, that's everything. Why? It's something bigger than yourself. Because if you only believe in yourself, and you are the center of your universe, you have no spirituality. But if you believe in something bigger than yourself, which gives you meaning and purpose in life, you have a spirituality. <coughs> when I talk to some of the professors here who are atheists, I always say this. I have never met a man or a woman of no faith. Maybe they don't believe in religion, but they believe in something higher, greater, and bigger than themselves. Maybe they believe in protecting of animals, protection of animals. They love cats and they love dogs. That's higher, greater, and bigger than themselves, you know? It's not just themselves, it's something else, bigger. This helping the child from young to develop a trust and a faith in something higher, greater, and bigger than themselves is to open themselves up to spirituality. This is spirituality. Something gives me meaning. Something gives me purpose in life. Something makes me strong. So, two people, we both meet the same disaster. Both lose our jobs. Both are left stranded with no hope for the future. One will look for an alternative. One will kill themselves. The one that will survive has a meaning, has a purpose. The one who kills themselves, they have no more meaning, no more purpose. Yeah? That's what faith is about. Faith in myself, faith in others, faith ultimately in something bigger, greater, higher than myself. Okay? So I think that's an interesting definition of faith. Right? So you know that faith touches everybody. Not just believers of a religion. Everybody. And we must cultivate spirituality from young. Spirituality is, I must connect to meaning and purpose in my life. So right from the day one, when you teach a young, young Bata, you know, in, in Catechism, you have to transmit to them meaning and purpose. What is life for? Remember the old, old Catechism? <laughs> Who made you? God made me. Why did God make you? He made me to know Him, to love Him, and to serve Him in this time, and to live with Him forever in the next. So these are the old, but you know, maybe you say, oh, maybe you didn't give much, but you think about it, hey, this captures meaning in life, gives a purpose. That's why we believe in God, right? That's why you believe in God. That's why you follow the gospel. So that is faith. Service, of course, follows through. If I believe in a God who loves everyone and wants everyone to take care of everyone else, I have to serve. Because my God, my Jesus, is a servant king. And the sacrament of this is, I mean, we, we didn't make it a sacrament, but people say, if we want, were going to have an eighth sacrament, the seventh sacrament, if we were going to have an eighth sacrament, they'll make foot washing. Eight sacrament. This is sacramental already, right? Foot washing is important because foot washing shows us the true meaning of the Eucharist. That's why Holy Thursday. Matthew, Mark, and Luke all tell the story of the Last Supper. But not John. John, his Last Supper story is very short. He says, when Jesus, fin when they finished eating, Jesus removed his outer garment. Right? So, John's Last Supper story is the washing of feet. Because in John the Last Gospel, in John's time, everybody already knows the Last Supper story. Everyone knows about Jesus taking the bread and the wine. So John didn't tell the story anymore. Because everyone knows. But they forgot the meaning. They forgot the meaning of the bread and the wine, the breaking of the bread, the sharing of the cup. They forgot the meaning. So John reinforced the meaning by emphasizing another part of the Last Supper the washing of him. Jesus gives himself in humble service. He, he is the bread broken for us, not for himself. He is bread broken for us. We who receive Jesus become bread broken for, for others. That's Eucharist. So Jesus washes the feet of his disciples. Humble service. He washes himself and then he says, tells them, you understand what I have done? Go and do likewise. Like, do it in memory of me. Go and do what I just did for you. He's not asking them to become professional pedicare, uh, foot washing uh, people, right? Uh? He's asking them to become men and women for others like himself. The Eucharist, Jesus gives himself 
so that we, receiving Him, can give ourselves in humble service. So this idea of service is non-compromising. All Christians serve. In one way, every catechist is a precious servant of Christ, right? Bringing to another generation the richness of our faith. That is our service. And we do it to the best of our ability. Huh? We do it to the best of our ability. And of course, how do we do it? This, one, this question is, why? Why do Christians do the things they do? Why does the catechist teach the way that she does? Because we believe in a God who loves us. We believe in an incarnated God close to us, right? Close to us, who wants us to work with Him for the salvation of the world. What do we do? Now, this is what. That's why. This is what do we do? We serve. According to our, our means, right? Huh? Some of us are trained in catechism, some of us are trained in other things, but we serve. And how do we serve? In communion with other people. What is communion? What's community? Both community and communion come with the same word. Common, what we all share together. Common, union. Common, unity. What unites us? What we share in common. What do we share in common for us here? Our faith. We share this in common. We share the same Christ, we know what He wants of us, and we do our best to carry it out. This unites us. So when catechists come from all over, like you come from all over, what happens is, you have many things in common. This unites us. Our mission is the same mission. The evangelization of the world, the salvation of souls. This is our mission. We share this in common. Some of us do it in schools, some of us do it in the parishes, some of us do it in the hospitals, but we all have the same mission. Right? This is our co communion. This is our communion. Right? Our common union. What unites us? What we share together. The same things we share together. So I think that's about a few minutes before 11. Uh, are there any questions you wish to ask? <laughs> Was that overpowering? <laughs> Was that overpowering? Uh, yeah. As you can see, I'm quite enthusiastic because I'm the vice president for the Southern Mission. My job is to make sure the students, the new professors, are all inducted in the culture of the school. And we base everything on F S C Fratres Scolaru Christiana Brothers of the Christian Schools. It is by fluke we manage to use three letters to get the core values. We should always have core values. What is not cannot be compromised. If I apply these three values to any Catholic organization, it can apply. It can apply. We are not monopoly. He said, oh, only the South schools have faith. Are you kidding? You know, yeah? Only the South schools serve. Are you kidding? Only the South schools develop communion and community. No. We all do. So even among the catechists, when you become a coordinator, you might want to form your catechists in a way in which you share the faith. And you don't just share the faith about, oh, we believe in the doctrines of the church, remember? The Christian faith is not about belief in things. Dogma. Doctrine. Our Christian faith is a relationship. It's a belief in someone, not in something. So if we don't believe in Jesus, we don't accept Jesus as someone we are intimately connected with in friendship, what happens is everything else we teach is a waste of time. Right? So we teach our students all kinds of things, but we forgot to teach them the most important thing. Introduce them to a relationship with God. That's why in prayer, prayer is so important. Because prayer is the only way they can communicate with God and enter into a friendship. If after many, many years of learning catechism, the child doesn't feel close to God and cannot talk to God spontaneously, you have recruited a wonderful person for a born-again church. You have recruited, trained and prepared someone for a born-again religion. Why? Because in all their catech upbringing and teaching, no one introduced them to a personal relationship with God. The whole purpose of our catechism is to introduce the child to God so they can walk together hand in hand, right? Huh? right in a friendship that will last a lifetime. All our sacraments, all our scripture, all our doctrines are secondarily important. And the most important thing is our faith is based on a relationship. If we miss that, then the friendship with God is not there. Why should a person be a Catholic except for cultural reasons? Oh, my whole family is Catholic, that's why I'm a Catholic. I'm baptized in the Catholic, uh, in the, in the Catholic, uh, in the Catholic family. It's so, okay. I'm Catholic. I don't want to disappoint my parents or my grandparents. That's not a good reason to be a Catholic. That's not a good reason to be a Catholic. We must bring up Catholics who mature in faith, grow up and say, 
this is not my father's religion or my mother's religion. This is my religion. This is my faith. This is my spirituality. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Well, not too much. Maybe you come and visit me in my office. I'm in a far, far building, 20th story. We can elevators. We're going to practice there. Thank you very much. Bye bye.